Hello everybody, this is Trevor Slesky, owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And I'm just giving you guys a progress report of the Model T display that I'm trying to make for the Museum of the Highwood. Um, when we show Laurel and Hardy <clears throat> on our silent movie night down at the Museum of the Highwood in High River, Alberta, Canada. This can take place April 28th at 7 o'clock p.m. So come on down and watch some good old slapstick with Hardy and Laurel. <laughs> See them in their silent movie careers before they actually became the comedy team of Laurel and Hardy. Anyway, I'm going to show you how far I got on the Model T's. Now, I'm actually running into some delays, so <clears throat> hopefully I can get something together, even if it's one Model T, just to show what... Uh, what I'm doing for the museum. Now the problem I'm having is that our weather out here in Alberta right now is just all over the place. And usually the good weather is when I'm at the store having to work. And the bad weather is on the weekend when I have time to actually get ready for this display. So what I mean is, you know, you get a nice hot warm day with no wind when I gotta work. The rainy ugly days when I need to go outside and paint these models <laughs> is a time when it's the weekend and I actually have time to paint the models. So that's a snag I'm running into. But there is one thing about this. We're constantly going to be revisiting silent movies. I'm going to try for every two months out of the year. So that would mean our next one is in June at some point. And uh, so there... Um, I'm just starting to ramble here. <laughs> but I want this to be like an ongoing display because I want to make a, a facade of some of the buildings around High River. And uh, that's going to take me a little longer than just a few days until the 28th. So we're going to try to make that one a really, really cool display. Now, let's go down to my bench and see how far I've progressed on Model T's. Oh, and I picked up this bowler hat. Now this is what Laurel and Hardy and Charlie Chaplin and a lot of the comedians of the time, I think Fatty Arbuckle and those guys, wore in their movies. So I thought I'd pick one up. There's a place up in Chinook Center that sells vintage hats. You can actually pick up, if you're the ladies watching, you can actually pick up the flapper style hats of that era. There's a whole bunch of steampunk stuff. It's a really cool place. And since Monster Hobbies doesn't sell hats, <laughs> well, I thought I'd pick up some. So I might have a little persona of a 1920s looking guy when I do this, these silent films. And I wore this striped shirt and my black uh, kind of warm jacket. <laughs> it's funny because uh, looking at myself, I kind of remind myself of some of those characters in some of the old Bugs Bunny cartoons and things like that. So, interesting stuff. Now, let's go down and take a quick gander at our Model T's. And here we have our workbench. This work in progress. It's looking quite like a Model T factory back in the day. I've got all the frames in the back here with some bodies. And then some of the components like the turtle decks, the spare tires, the steering columns. And then sort of like a pulled out version of some of the cars just so I don't lose parts. And then here I've got all the up top can, uh, tops, the windshield frames for the coupes, the seat bottoms, the seat backs, wheels, folded up um, tops or folded down tops. And of course the uh, pickup truck, the tall T, or as they call it, the five window coupe. Uh, this T is that five window coupe. Then I have a uh, turtle back body here, another pickup truck, the pie wagon, and of course, yeah, your turtle decks and whatever. Now the frames here. This is from the panel van, the 23T panel van. These ones are all 25 kits. 
oops, of course this one sort of a work in progress. I'm probably going to have to repaint this because the, there was specks of paint flying out and landing on this thing, like not specks in the paint, I should say, because my rattle can is a bit old. So that's no fun. This is the 25T frame. Now the engine actually is sort of a race version. This is like the police interceptor kit, which had uh, twin overhead cams and this sort of thing. So it's going to have a different look under there. There's an exhaust pipe that comes out the side and kicks back like a race car. Now, this is the other 27T. Zoom back a little. This was the one that was the model kit from the customer that passed away that glued the hood solid for his train layout and all the rest. And it used to be cream color. Now it's light gray, which is one of the colors for 1927. So I can't really get too far around this. And I left the beige top, but I've got to repaint it because there's all kinds of brush hair and everything because he painted it with a brush. And it's actually pretty ugly up close. After I washed all the dirt off it, it was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Whoops, got to repaint it. And of course the wire wheels in the front and the wood spokes in the back. The wood spokes in the back are going to be replaced. This was just so that I could make the car stand up. And I've got to re-chrome the little steps because I had to paint over those when I painted the fenders. He never painted the fenders. He left them gloss black plastic. Window frame I also painted black. It was a body color. It's just sitting there temporarily. It's got to be pushed up to the cowling. And uh, you'll notice that there's no fenders here except for on this one. That's because they are over drying. I'll just go over and show you that. So if you ever need to paint Model T fenders in mass production there's sort of a tip here. Not frames, fenders. <laughs> Oops. Uh, here. Okay, here's a good example. These are all done the same. So what I've done is I've got this paint shelf, as you can see, hanging off my wall with the metal brackets. So I got a, a wire that hooks on and goes into the back. I don't know if I want to touch this because I just painted it. Yeah, I guess it's okay. There's a back mounting hole right there on the floorboard for the turtle decks and the pickup bodies. So I just slipped this wire through, twist it up and bent it this way around. And then on the front of the car across this brace, I also have another wire. Now the reason for this is... Now, I'm outside painting these, so I'm not painting them in my basement. That's why my wall isn't all black back there. <laughs> but I'll hold it at the top. And spray paint going down this way. And then I turn the fenders this way. And do the same with the paint spraying down this way. And, of course, spraying your sides, you know, so you don't get missing spots there. Then I'll take it, Ooh. okay, just a minute, pardon me more, <laughs> I'll take the fenders and then flip them this way and hold it like that and then spray the top down again this way and then turn it around and spray the top down from the back. And then come back down in the basement and hang it back up on the hook. Let's just get her back to how they're sitting because that's a better hook end that I made. And then of course you hang them and then you get a few like these ones too coming over here and floating by like ghosts. <laughs> then I got the one up here and of course the one over there. So there's five of them all together. And the reason why that other one is on the uh, Model T over there is because I had to spray paint these flat black first. These are molded in white. 
And the reason why is enamel paint, especially black, is very thin. So, like, if you look here, don't know if you can see it, but there's a little ridge that runs around the fenders, like a pinstripe. And what will happen is the paint will run off. And I got an example of that, and I'll just show it to you. So here on this chair, I've got, uh, this is the Model T panel van that I got off the customer that passed away. But it was molded in red. And I had to strip the fenders. He painted them with this black paint that, <laughs> I think I know what kind of brand it was. It was that spray paint they used to sell. It was Canadian made spray paint and it came in white and black and it had a maple leaf on the the can and it was terrible. <laughs> uh, it never adhered properly and you could literally, after you painted it, after about a week, you could chip it right off the plastic. It was bad stuff. <laughs> it's not on the market anymore, so for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, you can't really tell with the lighting in the basement here. But this fender here, I first painted flat black as an experiment, and then I painted gloss black over top as a second coat. Now this one has really heavy ridges right in there. And uh, the flat black stuck to the heavy ridge, and then the gloss black stuck to the flat black on, on there. But on this one, and I know you can't see it, pardon the lighting, but in that same thing, if the lighting, you catch it right, you can actually see a bit of red through the black. Because this one, I painted with two coats of gloss black. And even with two coats, it ran off on the high spots. So I had to paint those other fenders I just showed you flat black first, because they were white, and that would have really shown up. So now here's, this is plastic. All plastic out of the kit. But I painted this with the Games Workshop um, four-stage acrylic paint. So base coat, a shade, layer one, layer two. I could actually go dry brush on top of this if I wanted, but I don't know how much you'll see in there when the kit's completed. But that's the uh, wood grain. There's underneath. Wood grain that I painted for this old kit. I still got to paint these edges black here and the cross beams. Although those are wood, so never mind. <laughs> There's the inside of the roof. And of course the roof itself, which was flat black. Painted it flat black. And of course we got those panels. And unfortunately that one's broken, but there's the top of it still glued to the other piece, so that's going to be fun. Anyway. I'm not sure how many of these Model T's I'm going to get done for the show. But I will do my darnest to at least get one with Laurel and Hardy in it. From, uh, pardon the movement here, the original Laurel and Hardy kit. And if not, well, it's unfortunate I couldn't get this one done. Couldn't even get it open. Like to even examine it to build it for this project, but... Uh, what can you do with time constraints? So anyway, this has been a... Oh, I got something else to show you. So, hang on. So I went to the mall when I picked up my hat uh, at the mall. They have a Lego store in the mall. So, uh, they have a thing where you can go and... A display where you can go and get minifigures. And of course, the minifigures, they're all just... You know, you got... One compartment that has heads, another compartment that has hats and accessories, another compartment that has legs, another compartment that has bodies, and they're just all randomly stuffed in there. So, I, I, we were looking around, and I managed to find, like, oops, a bowler hat. It's the Monty Python finger of God there. <laughs> a bowler hat, a suit, sort of with a tie and the black pants, and a Derringer gun for that guy there, and of course a mustache type face. So you got a a typical 1920s style character. 
And then while I was digging around finding his bowler hat, I also found that British style early police helmet, the bobby helmet or whatever you call it. And a sort of an Irish looking face with the red hair. I couldn't find a police shirt, but I did find that sort of, you know, 20s era suspenders with the white shirt thing. And he's got a pair of jeans with a little bit of a pockets, gold line pockets. And then this guy on the end, the sailor looking guy, that's the closest I think Lego, Lego wise, anybody can get to building somebody that looks like Tintin's Captain Haddock <laughs> with the beard and the face and everything and the sailor get up. So I figured this would make a, a pretty interesting little group of guys for a 20s themed Lego type of thing. And now everybody's holding a type of weapon in a way. You know, you got a police baton, a derringer, but Captain Haddock, they had all these things. They look like records. So I thought I'd take the record because you're allowed a, a hat, a head, a body, legs, and one accessory. Um, of course, you got to pay for this, right? But anyway, I thought I'd take that record because it kind of looks like a gramophone record. So if I ever, you know, go back to Lego store and they have some stuff to make a little gramophone, well, at least I have the record, because they change these guys every couple of months. According to the guy at the Lego store, every six months they redo the, all those bins. So, you know, get the parts while you can. And he also said I don't have to actually go and build minifigures. can actually go up there and get 15 parts. Because each guy consists of five parts. So for the same price as these minifigs, I can actually just get, you know, 15 bowler hats if I wanted. Anyway, something more cool for the 20s theme. Now this could also be murder mystery figures for, like, one of those type of Lego murder mystery deals. <laughs> anyway... Hope you enjoy it and hope you come down for our show of Laurel and Hardy on April 28th, Museum of the Highwoods, 7 o'clock, down in High River. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.